Hello, welcome to Epicenter Bitcoin, the show which talks about the technologies, projects, and startups driving decentralization and the global cryptocurrency revolution. My name is Sebastian Couture. I'm Brian Fabian Crane, and we have with us today uh, Sean Jones. Hey, Sean. Hi there, guys. Lovely to uh, to be back on the show. Thanks for coming on. And uh, so today's show is uh, we brought Sean on because she just came back from Crypto Valley Summit in the Isle of Man, and we wanted to get her impression on the conference. And also, uh, she did some interviews there for us, and uh, we'll comment on those interviews and sort of give you an idea of what's going on there and that little island somewhere off the coast of the uk um so sean how was the uh, how was the conference absolutely fantastic i was so invigorated by going to a conference that kept me stimulated from the moment i arrived to the moment i left and beyond in fact i stayed at, uh, uh, on the day later and had some really interesting uh, talks and discussions with people during and after um it is it, it, it is really refreshing to find a, uh, a conference. They, they called it a summit, and, and it really was. It was it, this was a summit. This was um, that there was just a buzz and an interest which I have not seen for a very long time uh, at a crypto event. So they did a fantastic job. Brilliant. And so perhaps we could just kind of explain to our listeners who maybe don't know where the Isle of Man is. And <laughs> I think a lot of people have heard about it and, and know that it's somehow attached to the UK and it's part of the Commonwealth. And But what what is the Isle of Man? Where is it? Uh, who what, what goes on there? <laughs> okay. Well, the Isle of Man is um, a, a, an island that sits pretty much equidistant between England and um the island of Ireland, so um, uh, kind of uh, off the north uh, west of England, uh, between it and um, Northern Ireland, and it's, 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 it's so it's right there in the middle of the Irish Sea. It's a self-governing uh, British Crown dependency, so it's entirely independent, um, but it it has the same Queen that we have in uh, in the UK. Um, it's got the oldest parliament in on the planet um older than any other parliament um and it's very proud of that uh, that tradition um it's been doing really well with attracting new industry being an island and this island has around uh, 86 87000 uh, population now it struggles uh, to keep um, its population. Um, you know, th th there are more attractive things elsewhere. And so it's, um, it, it needs to, 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 to stimulate its economy. And it's, it's been doing this really successfully in a whole range of sectors. And uh, it announced uh, a, a few months ago that it was going to welcome crypto businesses and it, um, it certainly has um, delivered on that. Um, uh, judging by by the summit, the summit was organised uh, partly by the uh, by the government. Um, so it was sort of sponsored by the Department of Economic Development, and um, it's been one of the main sp uh, sort of commercial sponsors for the event was KPMG, one of the big four uh, global advisory businesses, and that that just goes to show the kind of quality of interest. It's coming from government. It's coming from big industry and it's coming from all the different support industries on the island and it's really um, unprecedented for sort of a, you know a, a conference to be spearheaded by the government of a nation i mean it, it's it's very interesting and i mean of course it's a small island they, they want to stimulate uh new industries there and be sort of a, a place where people come to 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 start new types of businesses and, and in fact you know historically they were uh, one of the places where online gambling uh, first started to flourish back in the early 2000s, I think. That's absolutely right. Uh, the the, the e-gaming has been um, uh, a huge success for the island. Um, they recognized that um, as a lot of the rest of the world was um, switching off 
um, e-gaming that they, if they regulated it properly and used the infrastructure that they had on the island for dealing with financial services industry and build on that, that they could create a new industry there. And, and, and in fact, the um, to begin with, it, they made a few mistakes and um, they used it to to kind of provide a template for uh, new e-business uh, to come to the island. And, and I guess it, to a certain extent, they've used what they've learned with e-gaming to, um, to attract um, crypto. But if we look at um, uh, employment on the island, um, uh, Poker Stars, which um, uh, in its early days was set itself up on the Isle of Man, had just a handful of people and now employs several hundred. Um, and um, uh, so it's, it's brought real business. And I believe Poker Stars accounts for something, uh, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but uh, something like about 80% of all online poker is, is, is played with this one company. And it's based on the Isle of Man and counts, I think eGaming accounts for something like about 14% of GDP now. So mm. they've, they've certainly had a, a track record in, in attracting new industries. In fact, I, I had a talk, um, with, uh, Peter Greenhill, who is the director of e-business at the Department of Economic Development. So that's part of the Isle of Man government. And they're the people spearheading the, uh, the drive to attract uh, crypto businesses to to the Isle of Man, and um, he had some really interesting things to to say about um, uh, about the place of the Isle of Man uh, in in crypto and, and indeed why they've they've got into it. So this is Sean Jones uh, on my last day on the Isle of Man, uh, having attended Crypto Valley Summit. Um, which has been organized and sponsored by the Department of Economic Development, part of the government here on the island. And I'm sitting with Peter Greenhill, who's Director of eBusiness Development and whose remit, therefore, includes crypto. Absolutely. Um, Peter, this has been a, a very intensive uh, two days. So starting lunchtime yesterday through to lunchtime today, uh, packed. I have to say there was a tremendous buzz and a, a wonderful feeling, um, uh, probably more lively and energetic than any um, uh, crypto conference that I've been to for a very long time. Um, do you think it's, it, it, has it worked for you here on the Isle of Man as, a, as an event? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that we were hoping for that sort of buzz. Uh, I might have been expecting that sort of buzz, but you can't understand how comforting it is that we've had that sort of buzz. I mean, we've had uh, a tremendous number of C-level executives arrive from all over the world um, who are right at the heart of the digital business, not just digital currency, but the whole aspects of the blockchain and what it can do. Coming to the island to meet with island experts um, that could help them to set up their business in any way that they want to. Uh, the, the, the fusion of those, those two groups of people has been absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, you've experienced the buzz yourself, it's been, uh, it's been very, very strong. Indeed. Why is it that the Isle of Man has decided to engage with crypto and welcome crypto um, onto the island? To, uh, what, what, what started that? We've got a bit of a history of, of uh, looking at innovations in, uh, in industry and in business that we could adopt here on the island that we could provide good service to. Um, we need to grow our economy. We do that by growing jobs. Um, but let's go back to um, e-gaming. We welcomed e-gaming companies to the, to the island, but only under very strict uh, regulation. So we set the bar higher. We attracted the top end of the market. We made sure that we protected players all the time uh, by insisting that players' funds were segregated. What that did was create um, another buzz, a buzz of the gaming industry, not just the operators. We attracted uh, the biggest and best software operators in the business uh, to the Isle of Man to set their headquarters here. Suppliers to that industry um, came as well. And the, the island itself grew, so the whole area of data centers, of telecommunications capabilities grew exponentially through that environment. 
we're looking to do the same thing, obviously, and, prov and with the services we already have here to put that into the digital world. And of course, now you've got the the infrastructure here on the exactly. island, which yeah. maybe you didn't have at the outset with e-gaming. That's right. We had to develop it with those companies, but now it's there and it's readily available and we can turn it immediately into to helping the people who've been here this week. And you're not just looking for people to hang their brass plates here, you you want to bring people to the island. Very, very, yeah, very definitely. Um, we're not a brass plaque island. Um, we want people to come here, we want them to, to grow um, their jobs here. So, you know, if we go back a few years to e-gaming again, just to, to use that, that analogy, um, PokerStar started here with uh, four people. Mm -hmm. They're now well over 200. They've now been sold this year for $4.9 billion. A good growth story. A great success story. Microgaming, the same thing, arriving with a couple of people, growing to well over 200 staff here. And so, so what you're, what you're look, hoping for, I, I guess, is to have similar success with uh, crypto businesses that maybe start quite small here, yep. uh, where the founders might settle here and then start to expand and hire local uh, local uh, create local jobs I, I, exactly and, and those lo those could be local jobs of employing people who've come out of other areas um, there's a lot of people who are excellent at compliance on the island at customer service who are seeing that financial services on the island and and worldwide are shrinking they can then move across into jobs mm -hmm. within the digital world uh, but also I mean it's attracting new talent as well we can actually see um, for example, the uh, technology experts who are really creating things around the blockchain at the moment, starting perhaps creating applications relating to digital currency on the island, but then they'll be based here, they'll grow, they'll attract students from our university here that we're setting up mm -hmm. to grow into uh, a fascinating environment for the future mm. and that all happen here mm. and not a lot of people i think realize that the isle of man is um, um, owns a lot of what's in space i think a lot of satellites actually yes uh, there's, a, there's uh, an awful lot here i mean there, there are several sectors that people do we don't we don't sort of perhaps uh, fly our flag as, as high sometimes as we, as we ought to uh, but yeah space sector um aircraft registry uh shipping registry very very strong on the island so yeah there's lots of areas that people can can enjoy here. Well, after what I've experienced in the last two days, I would highly recommend uh, any uh, budding uh, crypto innovator to, 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 to check out the Isle of Man. Peter, thank you very much for, for hosting the whole event and for uh, doing such a splendid job of it. All the people uh, from the Isle of Man government who participated have done a phenomenal job. Thank you for your time this afternoon uh, sharing your thoughts with Epicenter Bitcoin. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. So as you heard from, from Peter there, they have uh, a real track record of attracting businesses. And, and these businesses include uh, aerospace, um, as Peter mentioned, uh, aviation and, and maritime registries. These are sort of more traditional, although, you know, in, in aerospace, uh, they uh, I think something like about 40% of all the satellites uh, circling the, um, the Earth are, um, <laughs> are owned um, by businesses and uh, managed by businesses that are on the island. Um, they manufacture um, uh, parts. I, I think the landing gear of all Airbus uh, aircraft are actually manufactured on the island. So there's, there's real um, concrete, uh, tangible business going on there. Um, They've got, of course, the e-gaming that, 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 that's been talked about, uh, other areas of e-business, uh, clean technology, biopharmaceuticals, biomed. These are uh, real industries that they've attracted to the island and that are successful there. Yeah, there's two things that I thought that were interesting. One is that you can, you really get the impression that uh, the, 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 the Isle of Man is, 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 is looking to uh, create jobs there. They're not, they're not looking for a place where uh, they're, they're not... Um, they don't want to create a place where people can just uh, have brass plaque um, businesses, as he as he stated. And the other thing that's interesting is when he when he talked about the gaming industry maybe about ten years ago. One thing that they worked 
to put in place was segregation of client funds, which is sort of something that we're often discussing in, in the Bitcoin space. So I think that they have that there's a lot of uh, experience that they would have gained from working with e gaming that carries over to the Bitcoin space because we are talking about financial uh, transactions and financial services and um, and a lot of that knowledge perhaps that uh, that we, that we have on the island can be carried over to the Bitcoin space. Absolutely, and I think um, they, they've got a, a, a track record of understanding that not every business is, um, uh, if you like, um, modelled on traditional financial services. So, as you say, they 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 adapted an understanding of finance and applied it to to e gaming, which is different. Um, and I think the approach they're taking with crypto businesses is similar. They are saying, you know, this isn't a traditional financial services business. So unlike um, New York, for example, unlike um, uh, Europe, which is at a, a much earlier stage, but uh, we, we, we mustn't forget that the European Banking Authority came out with its opinion a few months ago, and uh, there may well be consequences um, flowing from, from that uh, report. Um, they're saying this is not uh, necessarily a traditional financial service. This is something new, and we will adapt um, to, to 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 achieve the right aims to protect consumers, but uh, not necessarily using the same tools. And I, I think they they they're, they're very wise in taking that approach. And that's one of the reasons why the island is is um, going to be a very crypto friendly place. I think the other aspect, uh, of course, is that uh, they understand banking and payments. They, they do have a, a long tradition in financial services and in payments. Uh, the number of um, uh, payments businesses, small banks, um, payment processors, one sort or another, treasury management services on the island. And um, indeed, it, it was somebody from that background, uh, a guy called Paul Davis from Counting House, who probably could be credited with, with starting um, to get the Isle of Man government interested in in crypto and getting crypto businesses to come to the island. Um, he, he, he was involved in the early days of, of e-gaming and the pay, uh, providing payment services for e-gaming on the island. And so he was very well placed to um, uh, really to pick up on that theme. And he, he got, um, I, I, I think I credited him with... Um, uh, lighting the blue touch paper that's that, that's now given rise to to Crypto Valley Summit and and the real businesses are already starting to set up on the island, um, and he recognised the importance of payments and indeed, um, it is the availability of payment services at a time when banking is not open yet, um, not readily open yet anyway to to crypto businesses. Yeah, perhaps we can uh, address that question a bit because I've heard, uh, you know, at one point uh, people were saying in the Isle of Man one can get bank accounts for Bitcoin businesses, which is something that hasn't been possible in the UK, um, at least for the most part. And then I know there were some news just around the conference saying that um, now this has been reversed. And then I was writing about it in the newsletter and, and you, you were telling me that actually it's, the news stories had been kind of wrong. So it, can you just kind of clarify what exactly the situation is at the moment for Bitcoin businesses who want to get uh, bank accounts in the Isle of Man? Um, ab absolutely. Um, the, 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 one of the existing um, payment support in, uh, businesses on the island's a company called uh, Capital Treasury, and they provide treasury management services. So they handle payments on behalf of, of companies all over the world, including those, of course, that are based on, on the island. And they have the infrastructure and the uh, facilities to, to do that uh, at scale. And uh, they were offering or beginning to offer uh, banking or payment services. They, they themselves are not a bank, but they were able to offer payment services um, to uh, to businesses and had started to to open some accounts for, uh, for for crypto businesses. And the day before Crypto Valley Summit, um, they had to announce that uh, they had had to close 
their crypto businesses or will in, a, in the course of the next uh, uh, matter of a few days and weeks to do so because their bankers had withdrawn the facilities um, to provide banking, had basically threatened to close their accounts entirely if they didn't close their Bitcoin uh, related business. Uh, this was obviously a very unwelcome piece of news just on the eve of uh, the summit. Um, now, Capital Treasury are, are themselves not a bank. It's not their fault. And it, it turns out, although it was reported that it was uh, HSBC and Barclays, it actually appears not quite to have been the case. There was a different bank involved. And the history uh, the story behind it wasn't necessarily a, an, an automatic aversion as there has been elsewhere to crypto businesses, but rather as a result, um, as I understand it, of uh, a fraud uh, that had been perpetrated um, using one of those accounts. And of course, this had kind of red flagged that business through their fraud systems, and they felt that there was a higher vulnerability, a higher risk as a result of, 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 uh, of this one fraud that it could happen again, and so on and so forth. And it was that that triggered it. So it's, it was really an unfortunate set of circumstances. It's, frankly, it could have happened in, in any sector. And it, um, it just so happened. But, happened. but in another sector, if it happened somewhere else, it probably wouldn't have been that now no more e-gaming businesses can do business at all. Well, they had this problem. But, you know, perhaps... E-gaming had that problem early on. I mean, it's it's taken a while. Uh, um, right. and certainly the Isle of Man payments industry has been instrumental in, in providing payment services um, because it has a very high reputation, because they operate a proper um, – anti-money laundering regime on the island. They're, um, they're, they're not on anybody's blacklists. They're, they're considered, but they have very high ranking in terms of their regulatory framework. Um, they, uh, they've been able to provide, if you like, provide that lever, uh, a lev uh, level of confidence for the, for the banking industry in being able to do banking in high, in what are perceived to be high risk areas. Yeah, so what do you think the situation is going to look like in the future? Do you think, uh, will there are other banks be that step in? Well, absolutely. And, and Paul says something about that um, in, uh, in his interview with me. So this is Sean Jones on a sunny day in the Isle of Man, uh, somewhere between um, England and Ireland, a little island in the Irish Sea, uh, that's hosting Crypto Valley Summit. Um, one of the speakers uh, today is going to be Paul Davis, and he's very kindly given me a few minutes of his time. Uh, Paul, tell us a little about your involvement in the uh, virtual currency space. It's very new. If we turn the clock back 18 months, I didn't know anything about virtual currencies. But a friend and client of mine, Nick Dan, who lives in France, had the idea of establishing a Bitcoin exchange on the Isle of Man. He had some preliminary talks with government officials here and wasn't particularly happy with the quality of the responses that he received, thought he'd probably gone about it a little bit wrong, sat down with me and asked me to help him in formulating a better approach to the government. As a result of that, I did a lot of reading very, very quickly. I then did help him with his formal approach and elicited some very forward-thinking and positive ideas from the Department of Economic Development and from the Financial Supervision Commission. And my entire involvement in virtual currency has been built on that fortuitous event. Having done the job for Nick, I was then approached to advise a number of other companies that were coming here. And I realized that a major opportunity was in our hands. I went to the Department of Economic Development. I have a good friend there, Ray Davis, who also had been looking at the virtual currency space and had gained some knowledge. And the two of us decided to present it to the minister as an opportunity for the island. We were then lucky again. There's been a lot of falling on our feet in this process. John Spellman, the senior economic advisor to the government, became very involved, was full of ideas, articulated them well. The minister became excited. The CEO of economic development became excited. And the rest is history. Today, we have about 60 companies on or looking at coming to the island and literally hundreds of people showing up for this summit to hear about what we have to mm. offer. Well, you're largely credited with having um, ignited uh, the 
or lit the, the, the blue touch paper of virtual currencies on this island? Because your, your, your involvement up to then was in providing payment solutions for uh, the e-gaming space, which is something else the island is well known for. Correct. My company, Counting House, is involved in consultancy and facilitation of payments largely focused on e-gaming. Whether I should be credited with getting the ball rolling I think is questionable and I would also point out it could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on <laughs> where it all goes. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that this will be the seventh wonder of the modern world yet. Well, um, we, we shall see. There was some news yesterday um, that uh, one of the island's uh, treasury management businesses um, were told in no uncertain terms by their banking partners, their clearing partners, that uh, they had to drop uh, Bitcoin businesses, which uh, they, they were starting to take on, on their books. Um, that was obviously a piece of bad news. Um, what, what's, what's your view about that? Well, there's no doubt that access to the UK clearing system is a bit of a barrier for Bitcoin companies, not only on the island, mm. but across the planet, because England is a very fertile market for cryptocurrencies. You know, when you climb a mountain, not every step is upwards. Sometimes you have to take a step or two back, retrench, figure out a new route to the top and then get going again. And that's been very true of the whole progress of the virtual currency field. The good news is that uh, around 2.30 this afternoon, during part of my panel, I will be announcing that some alternative arrangements have been made and our native industries here that are involved in the Bitcoin space will be able to access new and probably in some ways better banking relationships, courtesy of a deal that was struck over breakfast this morning. Well, this is hot news um, uh, for sure. Are you prepared to share some more detail with us? No. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, there's new news uh, and, and is good news and that's what... what yes, what... and based on chats I had with the speakers over lunch, I'm not the only person that's going to be dropping some dynamite news into the audience this that's, afternoon. That's wonderful. We remain hear. very, very positive about the future of cryptocurrency on the Isle of Man. So it's not just the government that's supporting it with a, a regulatory regime that, that's very light, um, that ensures that the reputation of the island and the island standing is maintained whilst at the same time being attractive to virtual currency businesses but um, other businesses and players on the island who've taken steps to make it happen yeah in so many fields of endeavor there are people that think the glass is half empty and people that think it's half full i'm overwhelmingly positive i mean i live on the isle of man and i wear sunglasses every day if that doesn't demonstrate optimism i don't know what does um i should explain for some of our uh, listeners who don't know the isle of man that it's quite well known for being wet and windy and although today we're enjoying glorious weather well for the last two months we've been enjoying glorious weather it's quite uncharacteristic but anyway you know, Bitcoin and the technology that surrounds cryptocurrency is here to stay. We on the Isle of Man are very, very excited to be part of it. And I don't think it'll be going away any day soon, despite any fears of competition or other hypotheticals that are being posed by large banks. Mm. Well, it's, it's wonderful to hear. Uh, it's, it's also a joy to see um, a, 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 a jurisdiction that is nimble and astute uh, and that it is actually encouraging um, these innovations and these challenging um, disruptive industries. Yes, we, we're nimble and fleet of foot in a lot of areas. We're well known for our plays in clean tech, in space, in thermal engineering. There's a lot going on here that's exciting. And we have to be like that. We're a small, small jurisdiction. There are powerful pressures on people to move away if they don't find satisfaction and challenges here. But at the same time, uh, we're not about to be cowed or, or bow down to large entrenched interests that think we should become a backwater and grow potatoes and fish. Um, unlike some other jurisdictions that are maybe not quite so um, nimble and fleet of foot and unfortunately uh, losing uh, losing some of their population as a, as a consequence. My mother had a great phrase to describe this. She used to say, you make your own bed, mm -hmm. then you have to lie in it. We're busy making a good bed here. And I think that's a, 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 a wonderful point to, uh, to, to, to leave it. Um, Paul, thank you very much indeed for, for, for sparing the time today. Uh, I'm going to listen to your, uh, your panel session later on with huge interest. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Sean. So what came out of that was um, a panel session later that day where um, the CEO of Instabuild, who are um, a global 
merchant services provider, uh, the CEO, Jason Field, announced uh, that uh, his company is going to provide both merchant services and uh, banking facilities to the crypto industry. Um, it's unclear at the moment as to whether or not that will include um, access to the UK banking system to start with, but um, they are a very large uh, merchant services provider that covers and is used to handling so-called high-risk businesses. And um, that was a, a great piece of news. And it was followed just in the last couple of days. So since uh, Crypto Valley Summit, with the news that Natasio, who are now um, putting themselves into the Isle of Man, setting up in the Isle of Man, uh, are, um, uh, uh, have come to an arrangement with uh, uh, WallPay uh, uh, to provide uh, payment services and therefore route into the, um, uh, into the uh, banking system. And I think we will see more of these arrangements. And WallPay is, a, is, a, is an Isle of Man-based payment services provider. So um, I think we're going to have a whole string of announcements like this over these next weeks and months. I think it's it's really happening there, and they've got the appetite for it, and they can provide the confidence to the large banks eventually uh, to be able to handle this kind of business. Now, one thing that he mentioned that kind of stuck with me is it says the 60 companies, 60-odd 60 companies are planning to set up in the Isle of Man? Well, um, certainly so. I understand at least 15 have already... Um, set up shop on the island. Um, we heard on the, the first day uh, a keynote address from Steve Beauregard, who's CEO of GoCoin. They've already set up on the island. Uh, and we've heard uh, on the, um, uh, the, the first evening, we had a, 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 an after dinner speech from Brock Pierce, and uh, his businesses too are, are setting up on the island. So um, yeah, there's some big players coming to the island, and um, they're queuing up. Um, they're, they're talking to the government, and they're talking to um, businesses like Paul's and other support industries um, that can help them get set up on the island, get them set up for regulation, get them set up um, with um, corporations and structure and tax and all the other good stuff. Yeah, I, I should say the island is a, is a very tra uh, attractive place for tax as well there's zero corporate uh, corporate tax corporation tax uh, but i presume those companies uh, for the most part they have their operations elsewhere right they, they do the, the legal stuff perhaps some employees there but then they're, they're not moving all their people over there well <sighs> The island certainly not interested, um, as Peter Greenhill said, in uh, having businesses that simply hang a brass plaque on the wall. Uh, they want real businesses with real people creating real jobs. I think they understand that to start with, the existing players um, are probably um, you know going to work through representatives, and um, but but the, 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 in, in time they're really only interested in having real businesses that are creating real jobs on the island they did that with e-gaming and i think they're going to do that with crypto i think uh, anyone who thinks they can just sort of set up a uh, a kind of um, name only company on the isle of man and call themselves an isle of man business might find it not quite such a welcoming place certainly not in a, in, in in over these next months i think uh, they're expecting people to just to, to at least have some staff based on the island. And, and I think there are signs of that already starting to happen. So you have a third interview. Um, could you introduce it? Of course. Um, I guess uh, everything we've talked about so far is, is um, you know, very general uh, about providing the right environment, uh, supportive government and so on. But um, uh, they, although they're taking a light touch approach to regulation, they are having some form of regulation, it's not going to be a completely unregulated place, and they are interested in, in maintaining the reputation of the island. And I talked to one of the um, commercial sponsors of the event, um, uh, KPMG, uh, one of the big four advisory, global advisory firms. Uh, I talked there to Archie Watt, who's head of e-business uh, based on the island, and also Mickey Swindell, who's head of advisory on the island, both um, background in, um, in supporting e-gaming businesses, and both of them uh, advocates for crypto on the Isle of Man. 
This is Sean Jones on the second and final day of Crypto Valley Summit in the Isle of Man. Um, a little bit misty today. We haven't got the glorious weather that I was promised, um, but we certainly enjoyed yesterday. And I'm sitting down uh, with two uh, key people from sponsors to, to Crypto Valley Summit. Um, uh, KPMG are one of the um, big four um, uh, uh, consultancy firms that are leading advisors to business and I'm fortunate enough to have with me uh, this morning Archie Watt who's head of e-business and Mickey Swindale who's head of advisory and um, I'm hoping you're going to tell us a little bit about why KPMG is supporting uh, this new thing called uh, crypto. Okay well if you want me to pick up that first of all Shan, and why do we want to get involved with, with this crypto? because it's important for the island. It's a key feature of the uh, of industry going forward. You know, crypto is not going to go away. And KPMG is very keen and has always been very keen to work with growing businesses in new sectors that can make a positive contribution to, to, to life on the island and, and elsewhere. I think it's fair to say we have a track record in that area because of the work that we've done with the gaming sector, which has been a very important developing sector in the Isle of Man over the past 10 years, really. Um, and one of the reasons that Archie joined us as our head of e-business was because he had so much experience on the gaming side. Um, and we've really seen the benefits of being an early passionate advocate for that sector and I, and I hope that we can do the same when it comes to cryptocurrencies. And wh why the Isle of Man? What, what, what's made this place so attractive to crypto? Well first of all the ability to get business and government together so easily. Business and government here in Ireland work really closely together and that doesn't mean that, uh, that, that business gets everything it wants from government but it does mean that we can speak to government, government will listen to us and so long as it's in the best interests of the island, it will go through. But, you know, it's still a very, very well-regulated entity, very well-regulated territory. And, you know, we sign up to all the, the best practices. We've been reviewed by numerous EU and international bodies on, on transparency and tax and all the rest of it, and passed. Far, far more easily than a lot of other territories. Mickey, would you say that? Yeah, and I think it was interesting listening to the regulation panel yesterday, which, which of course you were on, because um, it, it actually changed my view slightly on the, on the regulation question, because it's clear that one of the big attractions of the Isle of Man has been that there is a strong, well-recognised regulator here, and that the companies, the operators in this sector, are hungry for regula regulation, because those, the good actors within the sector, want to be able to, to show that kite mark and say, look, I can, I can, I'm checked, people, people can, uh, can attest to this. And so it was interesting to hear John Spellman sort of say, be careful what you wish for, because, you know, the register initially is, is, is going to be a very powerful force, I guess, for, for um, AML and, and, uh, and fit and proper legislation and customer protection. And, and I, I, I suppose I had thought that introducing a full prudential regime quickly after that would be the right thing. It's interesting to take a step back and think, well, maybe mm. it's not. You know, maybe that could stifle innovation. Maybe it would be. You know, let's not rush to, to, to do that. So I don't know what your thoughts are on well, that. And I I still, having having spent sort of 15 years in, in gaming, you know, you know, as Warwick Bar Bartlett said yesterday, you know, the, ga the gaming sector was crying out for regulation and tax. Now they've got it, and you know they're you know they're being taxed out of existence. I think that you know Warwick's words were very very true. So I, I like Mickey. I thought that we should be going down the, the regulation route, but uh, we need to make sure that appropriate and fair amounts of uh, of Consumer protection, KYC, anti-money laundering, and you know, prote you know, protect proceeds of crime legislation mm -hmm. is all of those things are, are complied with by by the good actors here on island. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think that could be about the right sort of level. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's going to be a balance, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's we don't want to kill a thriving sector. At the same time, we want to make sure that the the bad actors are kept out. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Isle of Man has taken a very a uh, bold step and venturous step um, by saying that it at this stage isn't planning to regulate um, cryptocurrency businesses but instead requires them to comply with um, 
what are broadly the the anti money laundering um, mm-hmm. laws that either already exist here on the island or um, are being amended mm-hmm. um, to to bring um, bring them in line, I suppose, with most of the other European nations. But essentially, to to bring AML systems into play, mm-hmm. um, and so long as that is done, and the businesses are are, are properly run well managed uh, um, businesses that they are welcome here on the island mm. and there's virtually nowhere else in the world at the moment that's saying come here to do business mm. uh, to crypto businesses that is yeah but it's interesting there are more people coming to the party aren't there you know we, we've seen it over the past few weeks more and more jurisdictions are taking an interest in this area and i think that will increasingly happen but the Isle of Man's stroke of genius, I guess, was was taking early action, making a bold announcement, as you say, back in June, setting up the FSC register and, and expanding the designated business bill to make sure that it does include companies from this mm. sector. Um, and, and I hope that stroke of genius stands them in good stead. We shall see as well, everyone else gathers uh, around the feast, I guess. I, I think some may try and copy the, the model that's been set here. Do, do, do you feel that that's uh, uh, likely, maybe some of the other smaller islands. Almost certainly, uh, I mean, almost certainly. It's uh, if something is good, it will be copied. Mm-hmm. And I think that you know, from what you're hearing around here, the uh, the delegates here seem to think that the what what the island has announced and how they are implementing mm-hmm. it is good. And the island has a record of. Um, attracting new business, not necessarily financial no, services no, businesses, no, 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 no. but other forms. I think I think the um, Isle of Man is big in space, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the Isle of Man is uh, is big in in bio pharma, um, the, uh, the, to name but two. And, mm. and and so they're not just interested in financial services. So this is uh, the right place for them to 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 uh, or the right time uh, for them to to use the same uh, adventurous model. Uh, for um, for crypto businesses, I agree. I think for any of the um, of the uh, the small business islands, um, that diversification is really important mm. because the world economy changes. Yes. As we've seen, financial services have declined rapidly as a sector. If the Isle of Man hadn't had these other sectors which were growing and thriving and innovating and changing, it would have struggled. Mm. I mean, John Shimon this morning set out some fabulous statistics, didn't he, about mm. the success of the Isle of Man. And, and, and I firmly believe that without that diverse underpinning of industries, that wouldn't have happened. So will KPMG be setting up um, a, a, a crypto office here in in Douglas. Well, the uh, the office is already crypto aware, so <laughs> uh, so we are uh, so we we already bought into the concept of mm-hmm. uh, of crypto. Well, I'd like to thank you both for for spending time with me this morning. Um, I can hear in the background that people are going back in to listen to a, a, a I think a Bobby Lee probably. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, I think we. Uh, should should um, probably slip back in at the back now but thank you both very much for your time today thank you, thank you, thank you. so you heard uh, Archie and Mickey uh, talk there about some of the practical things that, that that are being done on the island in terms of regulation it's not regulation of crypto specifically although um, I think in time we might well see some more specific crypto legislation come in but i don't i I think that's some some time off um i think they'll wait and see and and they will take their time to do that if they do it at all um at a practical level they're in the process of amending their proceeds of crime act uh, in such a way that it will bring uh crypto businesses into the framework of uh anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing regimes um it'll simply be uh, another industry that that has to comply with those rules and it's also in the throes of uh, bringing in a new bill um, expected around the end of this year maybe the beginning of next year uh, for the re- mandatory registration or statutory registration of certain types of businesses um, so that there is some sort of supervision of their uh, anti-money laundering uh, regime and uh, so this is effectively just to, to create a, a mandatory registration um, requirement to bolster the the proceeds of crime act provisions uh, and those two things together um, will will be the the, the extent 
of uh, regulation of crypto businesses and um, uh, will give a, a, a very provide a very light touch um, environment for, for crypto businesses to start and to thrive, I believe. Yeah, I love how they, they sort of have a balanced approach where they, they want to uh, keep this sector thriving uh, while trying to keep the back to, bad actors out with some light uh, AML, KYC kind of uh, layers on top of, uh, of the regulation. So, yes, um, I, I wouldn't yeah. say that the uh, AML, KYC um, rules are any lighter than anywhere else. They are world class and, and they're recognized for being so. But to the extent that there'll be, it'll be light regulation in the context of the whole spectrum of, of crypto business. It will only be that aspect that will be regulated. Um, uh, and, and that makes it certainly a light touch approach. But they're not a pushover. I mean, they do run their, um, their AML um, operations um, to global standards, and and they're known for it. So they, 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 that's how they maintain their reputation. I think it's also worth mentioning that um, the Island Man is in a rather curious situation. It's physically in Europe, in the sense that it's you know sitting there between two uh, two of the outlying islands, the United King, uh, you know, um, Great Britain and and, and Ireland. Um, but it's not part of the European Union. So it sits outside of all the EU directives, outside of all this sort of um, bureaucracy that uh, that flows out of Brussels, with one exception. Um, under the arrangements that it has with uh, the United Kingdom, it, the customs arrangements it has, it, it, it applies a VAT system, a value-added tax system, that... Um, parallels the system in the United Kingdom, which is part of uh, the European Union. So uh, whatever the rules are for VAT in the United Kingdom, the same rules for VAT apply on the island. All other taxes are entirely their own business. So um, as I mentioned earlier, there's no corporation tax unless you're a bank. Um, the, the, the other um, taxation is uh, is is very favourable. Um, but VAT rules are not governed by Brussels in, in the I'll, UK. Yeah, effectively, the rules for VAT are set um, in Brussels. Well, they're set um, in, a, in a VAT directive, so they flow from um, the Parliament and the Council of Europe through the Commission, um, and as a um, as a a result, all the member states, including the United Kingdom, have to follow those rules. However, different member states do sometimes interpret those rules slightly differently, especially when it comes to financial services. So, as we've talked about on a previous episode, um, there's a um, there are variations throughout Europe, and um, unfortunately, from the Isle of Man's perspective, um, whatever or however the UK interprets. Uh, VAT, they have to interpret it the same way. Um, it, it, it helps them because they the, they share their VAT with with the United Kingdom, and that that helps with their um, fiscal um, stability. Um, but it does mean that there's VAT. So at the moment, the UK has a very favourable approach to VAT on crypto, and uh, therefore there's a very favourable VAT approach on the Isle of Man. If that changes in time, uh, perhaps as a result of this impending uh, decision by the European Court of Justice, uh, which may come out in a year or two's time, uh, and that will have an effect on the whole of Europe, that will have an effect on the whole of the European Union, I should say, that will have an effect on the UK and that will have to be mirrored on the Isle of Man. But right now, um, it's, it's outside of Europe and there's a very good VAT and general tax uh, regime. Anyone who wants to find out more about um, business and life on the Isle of Man uh, will find a website uh, that's run by their um, their uh, uh, business development, um, their economic um, uh, development department, and that's at uh, whereyoucan.com. Um, very catchy name, whereyoucan.com. You can find out all about the Isle of Man there. 
Cool. And so you're setting up an office there, I understand. Well, yes. Um, I, I'm so, you can tell, I'm so enthusiastic about what's happening there on the island. Um, I, I think the, um, uh, the, the, the facilities are there for any business to set up. Um, as some of the listeners will know, I, I specialize in regulatory compliance and uh, um, it's nice to have a place where it's a, a light touch regime where I can have a rather different approach to the regime I have to have in the in the offices elsewhere in Europe. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm setting up in Douglas, which is the uh, the main center on the island, and um, I will be there um, increasingly uh, more often over these next uh, weeks and months. How do you get there? Is it like a, you take a boat or a plane? <laughs> <laughs> uh, both. Uh, I don't recommend the boat in winter. <laughs> the seas in the Irish seas, uh, Irish sea can be very choppy, and it's not everybody's cup of tea. But there's some fast uh, ferry services from uh, the west northwest part of um, um, you, uh, England, uh, Liverpool and Haitian, I believe. Um, but you can fly. Um, all. Um, the major British airlines uh, fly there. British Airways flies there from London City and Gatwick, I believe. And there are other airlines flying from other uh, major centres on uh, in Great Britain. And, of course, through London, you can get great connections from other parts of uh, the world. Cool. Well, uh, good luck with um, setting up there. And, of course, that also means that if, uh, you know, to all those who are uh, running a Bitcoin business and they're wondering where the best uh what the best options are in terms of where to set up they you know they should get in touch with uh, sean and uh, perhaps uh, she can help you explore the option of setting up on the isle of man well certainly and uh, shameful plug but um, come to coinsult.eu and you'll uh, you'll you'll be able to, to to reach out to me and i'll be more than happy to give advice Cool. Well, thanks so much for listening, and uh, thanks for, uh, especially to you, Sean, for producing this content. It's it's really been uh, great to listen to the interviews you've done uh, here and also at or there and at also inside Bitcoins. Well, uh, thank you once again for having me on the show. I so thoroughly enjoy working with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so do, so do we. <laughs> so thanks so much, and of course, thanks so much to our listeners. Uh, for listening once again to one of our episodes so if you want to uh, if you want to you can follow us on twitter at episode of btc you can also leave us a review on itunes which is very much appreciated it helps new people find the show um, and you can subscribe to your newsletter at episode of bitcoin.com slash newsletter and of course tips you know we do appreciate those as well so you, you can uh, give us uh, show us your appreciation on um Bitcoin.com slash tips. Well, thanks so much and we'll be back next week. <laughs>